Good morning, everyone. This is Linda with Linda Soup Plants for you. And I wanted to welcome everybody. Welcome the newcomers and welcome the my diehard fans that keep coming back. I appreciate you all so much. Today I am going to bring to you yet another I call it a negative video because that's really what it is, and I, I, I hate to do this, but I really need you guys to see what's going on here with my plants. I'm hoping that in bringing this to you, that it will help others deal with their issues with their plants, regardless of what those issues are. Just to let you know that, you know. We all go through it. I don't care who you are. Nobody nobody is spared occasional plant problems when you have the kind of plants that many of us have. So today I'm going to do a video on my Marantas, my praying hands plant plants, plural. I had many and they were all gorgeous, beautiful, healthy, and now, as you can see, that one, I believe, is totally dead. This one is barely hanging on. And I have more. Then there's this one. You'll remember that I had one down here and up here. My other one is already on the table where this one is headed to. Uh, again, I am not sure what is wrong with these plants. Um, I know that we had some watering issues here, but I really feel like it's more than that, but I'm not finding anything. I'm not finding any type of insect problem, so I'm not sure what it is. I'm going to try and figure that out today, and I will record some of it um, probably not all of it because it'll just be like probably a half a day of work so uh, but I'm gonna bring you into the dining room where I work on my plants and show you in a better light uh, what I have going on here and we'll talk about how we're gonna fix it so stay tuned Okay, so here we are in my workspace. <clears throat> um, hope you can see this okay. Yeah, it looks like you can. Alright, where do I begin? I, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm very sad and perplexed at this point. Um, and as I said in my last video, I I do believe that my plant issues are from the inconsistent watering uh, due to too many people taking care of it, I think. Um, I've never had a problem with this plant. I My first plant was um, in a tiny little, I think it was a three inch pot, and I think I had two leaves on it. That's how I purchased it. And I grew that into many, many big, huge plants. Um, some that I gave away and some that I just kept dividing and spreading out throughout my home. And if you go back into my older videos, you'll see how, how beautiful they were. And <clears throat> so, today what I want to do is try and clean them up and hopefully I won't run into any kind of pest problems. You know, we talk a lot about you know, different pest problems like uh, fungus gnats and um, spider mites and fungus itself and mealybugs, white fly, aphids, but there's a lot more than just that. 
Those are the more common ones. There, if you if you research on, if you go to Google and you punch in houseplant pests, you will get a lot of links and a lot of information. And there are a lot more houseplant pests that we don't, we never talk about. Now, is that what's going on with these? I don't know. Honestly, that's my honest answer. I don't know. I don't believe so. I do still think that this was a watering issue. Um, I just repotted these two weeks ago. Um, but they continue to decline. So the question I have to ask myself is, would they have done that anyway? Was the damage already done to the root system? And and it, it would have declined whether I repotted it or not? Or is there something else going on that I just can't figure out? And I'm going to continue to research. And as of right now, we're going to call it a watering issue. But... I'm I'm going to do a little more research. I want to I want to see if there isn't something else that would be a logical explanation. But for right now, we need to get these cleaned up because I'm afraid I'm going to lose them. And you know, I could start over again with another viable cutting. Um, I mean, these two leaves are still in good shape. And. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try and clean these up and see what happens. And I'm gonna have to put them in a little brighter light than they're normally in until we get through this issue. Uh, the other plants that I showed you in the beginning of the video are not in here yet. Those I don't have enough room in front of me, so I I kept those in there, and I'm not sure that. Those plants have the same issue as these plants, even though they're the same type of plant. So I'm a little reluctant to put them next to each other because if it's not the same issue, I don't want to create more of a problem. Um, that's another problem. When you have issues with your plants, and I know most plant people have said this a zillion, trillion, billion times, um, it's best to keep them segregated from your other plants because they can, um, the other plants can contract certain diseases and insects from each other. So you want to try and keep that in mind when you have a problem. Fungus is one of the worst. Fungus is a very contagious um thing and it when you have it on one leaf you should first of all very carefully cut that fungus away if possible and then um, and then move it to a sink or outdoors where you can wash it thoroughly and keep it away from other plants um, I have found that to be the best way to do it so all right um, on a better note I want you to know that I have some really wonderful things going on with some of my other plants and I'm going to try to bring that to you um, for the weekend. I'm, I'm hoping I can bring a smile to your face instead of this uh, sadness because nobody likes to feel sad. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just cut off these dead leaves and I'm going to start There is a substance on these leaves, and I'm not sure what it is. On these two.
it's a, it's almost like a, like a film. It's, it's a white, I don't know, this could have been from, um, these two plants that I have here, I, I, I should correct myself, did not come from my original plant, but the other ones I'm going to show you did. These I purchased um, for the sole purpose of having something to put in my sand from that I got from my daughter for Christmas. Um, and I've got these at um, uh, Stein's Garden Center we have by us. I don't think that's nationwide. But anyway, they looked very healthy at the time. The film I'm seeing on here, I'm thinking maybe uh, an old residue from, you know, their greenhouses and when they spray for insects or, th or whatever. So hopefully that is all that that is, and I'm going to wash those off. And then save what we can on this plant. I'm, like I said, I've already repotted it. And it's in a very good mixture. It's it's very light and, and airy. It's got a lot of perlite and uh, cocoa choir and some orchid bark pieces. So there's nothing wrong with the soil. And I didn't see anything flying around it. However, I do want to take it out of the pot because I want to look at the roots. So we're going to do that right now. And uh, by the way, I had my first physical therapy yesterday. A very, very wonderful young man. When they first told me they were sending Brett, I said, wait a minute, is that a guy? And she laughed and said, yep. I was like, okay. You know, I can remember when my mom was in the hospital. She had a heart attack years ago. And um, the third day that she was there, I was there with her, and they sent in a male nurse to bathe her. He was in his 20s. I, I know that those of you who are older that are watching this are probably thinking to yourself, oh, OMG, right? I tried to get my mom to understand, Mom, there's a lot of male nurses. It's just the way it is today. I said it's no different than when a female nurse helps a, a male patient. And oh boy, she went off on everybody in the room. I didn't, I thought she was kind of overreacting at the time. But I understand now that I'm older, I, I get it. I, if, if I would have been in a hospital and, and a male nurse would have came in to bathe me, I wouldn't have allowed it either. There is, it, and it's not anything against that male nurse. I'm sure he can do just as good a job as, as a female. That's not my issue. My issue is it's unnatural for me, and it was for my mom. And for some of you who are even younger, it might be unnatural. But definitely when you get to be an older woman, it, it's very uncomfortable. So when they told me they were sending this male physical therapist, I got a little bit uncomfortable, but I thought, well, let's just wait and see how he how he does. So, he, he got off kind of a, to a rocky start because he was supposed to call me the night before and let me know what time he was coming, which that didn't happen. And then when I did get a hold of him, finally, he said, oh yeah, I was just going to call you. We'll, we'll see you. Uh, would between 3 and 3.30 work for you. Okay, now I don't know if you guys saw what I just did there. I just want to point that out to you. There's a little... 
where I just cut this stem. I can't bring it up to you because of my arm. I apologize, but you'll see, or I just trust me on this. It's very green and moist in there. So that tells me that this is still very healthy. So we're just going to leave that in here. Now, since this is already sort of falling off, let me try and pull this apart without doing too much damage. And I can tell you these roots are still damp. Wow. Now, those of you that know me know that this is killing me to do this. I, I, I hate to cut or break roots. I just, I just don't like to do it. It's the lifeblood to the plant, you know. It's where they get their water and nutrients. Now look at how strange that is. Isn't that odd? It's coming out the side up there. I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, it must have been laying on its side. Okay, not so odd. Okay. My fault. All right. Now the roots feel a little damp yet, and some of them are some of them are no good. But it's got a very fine root system. I'm going to do it. Oh, I got to stand up. Okay. I'm going to... This is dried and callous as this is. But I'm going to cut into this. I'm going to cut into this as well. Still very green. This is a viable cutting. I'm going to repot this. We're going to set this aside for now. And we're going to continue on. Anyway, going down my side road. He called and we talked and I said, he said he was going to be a half an hour, oh, I, wait, now he called me at 10 o'clock, I got a hold of him at 10 and he said, yes, I was just going to call you, well, I said, can you please tell me what time you're coming today, I mean, it's 10 o'clock already, I just, I just need to have an approximate time, are you going to be here in an hour, or are you coming this afternoon, or, he says, oh, well, I was planning on coming between 3 and 3.30, would that work for you, I said, you bet. So, at uh, 10 to 3, he called and said he ran late, ran over at his last appointment. He would be about 30 minutes later than he said. Um, and he apologized, and I texted him, and I said, I got your message. No worries. Don't speed. I'll be here. Just come when you can. So, he got here about, I don't know, it's been up close to 4 o'clock. And he was such a gentleman, and he knew his stuff, and he was very thorough and very good, and he really gave me a lot of hope. He, he, he pretty much told me that he has clients that it's not really hardly worth working with them because they've got their mind made up that it's not going to be any better. They're so depressed and, and what have you, and I get that. I do. I mean, one of the, a couple of the questions he asked me was, do you... Uh, have anxiety. I said, well, uh, no, not really. I'm not a, I'm not anxious, no, you know, as a rule. I said, do I have moments of that? Yes. Um, before we got our uh, recliner, our electric recliner, I had a lot more anxiety because once I was in, in that chair and my husband went to bed, I could not get up out of that chair on my own. So, that filled me with a lot of anxiety, yes, because if I had to get up to use the restroom, I had to 
uh, call dial my husband and wake him up in the middle of the night to come and help me. And he works 11, 12 hours a day. So obviously I didn't want to have to do that. So we decided that getting an, an electric recliner was, was the way to go because that can stand me up practically out of there. So that's what we did. We got a really nice used one. Beautiful. Looks like new. Brown leather. A light brown leather in it. Um, for $390. I mean, those chairs are like over $2,000 new. So we felt very blessed to get to find that. In fact, my husband's sister found it for us. So, all right. So long story short, he, um, the therapist ended up working with me here for about two hours. And uh, he said, and then he asked me, do you ever get depressed? And I said, well, occasionally. I said, and last week was one of those weeks I said I, I I had a day there when I was pretty down I was very depressed and I talked to my friend Susie from Suzette's Gardens and she cheered me up like she always does and and let me vent and sometimes that's all we we need to do when someone is in that state of mind sometimes they're not looking for help or advice they just need to vent to someone who who really cares and that's that's what I did and as I always tell my my kids my grandkids my daughter you know you, everybody has a, a, a time in their life when they have a reason to be depressed and I don't I don't know anybody that can escape that that's life what we can't what we can't do is dwell and I've always been a real stickler about that so you know, my motto is, if you deserve to be able to have a pity party, go ahead and have that pity party for a day. For a day. That's a long time to feel sorry for yourself, isn't it? You can cry. You can, some of you are going to want to cuss a blue streak. Whatever you got to do to make yourself feel better, to get rid of that built up, anxiety but then when you go to bed that night tell yourself tomorrow is going to be a better day and make it a better day don't wake up with a negative thought get up do whatever you do to to make yourself feel better um, for me sometimes it's watching watching Joyce Meyer I love her show or maybe I'm just I just get up and pray or whatever everybody has their own way of dealing with things that's my way and then, for the rest of the day, I'm, I'm good most of the time. You know, do I ever have a time when that doesn't work and I, I don't bounce back that next morning? Of course I do. But I don't let it get me down another day. I move on and I do the best that I can do with that time. Because, I mean, what else can you do? You know? All right. So he was very, my, my physical therapist seemed to be listening and I was, I was very grateful for that. He didn't, he didn't do all the talking like some of those people in the medical field do and they run circles around you and at the end do you have any questions and they hope you don't have any. Yeah, no, he wasn't like that at all. In fact, he was very, very encouraging. He, he believes he can get my arm back to almost normal. Not, he said, I can't promise this or this or this. He said, but that's we're going to work toward that goal anyway. He said, and, I, and one of my things is I can't brush my hair. I can brush it with my right arm, but I can't do anything else. I can't curl it. I can't put in a comb. I can't put in a... Uh, ponytail I can't do anything except brush it with my right hand and I have very difficult hair to begin with it's very fine so I always had to do a lot to it and now I'm pretty much stuck with this thin straight hair that sticks to my neck and my head it's very uncomfortable so my granddaughter when she can she'll come and she'll stick it up in a ponytail for me, which is awesome. But, you know, 
she's got a family. She can't be here every day either. So, uh, he did. My therapist said, "We are going to get you to the point where you can fix your own hair." And I was like, "Oh, thank you, God." <laughs> brush my teeth and fix my hair and do it by myself that would be wonderful so yeah i had a lot of good um news from him and good conversation and i'm i'm feeling pretty good about that so as i'm yakking as you can see i'm pulling off the any any kind of dead matter here because we want to get it all out once and for all and you know as I'm sitting here thinking about this yes I did repot this but I put it right back in the spot where it was and if it wasn't getting enough light there and this was already starting to turn um that wouldn't have helped. That didn't help matters. So, I'm not going to make that same mistake. My husband wants to put an overhead light over this, where this, this is right next to my table where I have all my sense of area. Um, but I don't think the light is going to be close enough or bright enough. Um, right now I've got two lamps on that table. And I don't know that his idea is going to make it any better. So I don't, I'm not sure what we're going to do about that, but I definitely think this plant needs to get more light on it. You know, and the other thing is it might just be too cold in here for it. It's I, my average temperature in this end of the house is 68, 69, 70 in there. And I can't stand it any warmer than that, so. But these plants shouldn't need anything any warmer than that. But, you know, if you're not getting bright enough light. And you're watering too much. Now, the other thing is you got to think about, or I have to remind myself that. During the summer, it was grow this plant was growing really good. So it was... It was soaking up the the water from the soil. Um, as that slowed down, now that we're getting into fall, and I noticed that with a few of my other plants too. I go to feel them and it's like, whoa, that's still wet? So I think that might be part of the problem. I think it's it might be a little too cool in here and with fall around, right around the corner, you know, the days are getting shorter and the, um, uh, the growing slows down so on most plants. Uh, so I'm, I'm still pretty sure that it's all connected to all of that, the watering, lighting, whatever, but we'll see. Oh, and I gotta say one exception to that slowing down thing is my spider plants. They don't, they, that is when I always, well not always, but traditionally that is when I always got the most, uh, that's when my babies would, would be born in the fall on my spider plants. And I know they also like to be pot bound. Your plant does not have to be big and huge to have babies. It can be in a small, I got one actually, in a four inch pot. It was a cutting from my friend, and it's got babies on it, so, yeah. This is just dirt. Those aren't bugs. Okay, my friends, I think you got the idea of what we're going to do here. Still green, still viable, but look at the leaf. Now, like I said, the backside is dirt on there. That's what you're seeing. 
not fog. But I don't see any signs of insect damage. There's no holes in the leaves. There's no, um, you know, telltale shiny silver from that some bugs leave behind. It, it just there's there's nothing nothing. So now I do have a new shoot coming out down here. And I've got a new shoot coming out on top. So I think I got the bulk of the nastiness off of here. And these two leaves look very healthy still, so we're going to leave those alone. And these look pretty good too. So what I'm going to do is wash this off and I'm going to use the same soil because I just repotted these and it's I'm yeah it doesn't smell sour it smells still smells like good soil so I'm going to use the same soil I'm going to put it back in this pot Oh, and my therapist said I was doing very well. He said I could, when I said, do you really think I could be able to get my arm back up there? He said, yes. He said, and I think you're going to be a perfect candidate for this uh, physical therapy. He said, because I can tell by the way you're using your arm and moving your arm, you're not bathing it. You're, you're, you're working already on your own. I said, yeah, to a point. I said, I, I did notice that myself when I... You know, when you're <laughs> you're walking around doing things, you just do things without thinking about it. And you use your arm the way you would normally use it. Until it hurts. And it's like, ooh, I shouldn't have done that. But I didn't let that stop me. Um, but I did let him know, yes, I do. I do baby it when someone else is in the room because I'm petrified they're going to bump into me. And it's not like it hasn't happened, so it's not an unfounded fear. And it's an accident, of course, but nevertheless. Uh, and when somebody else is in the room near me, I tend to pull, pull back into my chair a little further. <laughs> but I don't think anybody can... Blame me for that. I certainly don't want any more damage than already I have has been done. And for those of you that are new here and haven't uh, and have no clue what I'm talking about, I fell on June 26. I was getting up from my sofa and walking towards my fridge, and I took two steps, and I went down so hard it was like somebody pushed me from behind. And I broke my fall with my arms straight up. And at my age, that's not a good thing to do because I've already got osteoporosis going on. And uh, so I ended up in the hospital for five days. It was uh, extremely, extremely painful. And when I got to the, when the surgeon came in, he said, well... He said, you're a perfect candidate for shoulder replacement. And I said, shoulder replacement? He said, honey, you, you shattered your shoulder. Your shoulder is crushed. And you've broken bones in both parts of your arm. And you have a frac fra fracture in your right arm. So at that point, I was a mess. Now, mind you, that was June 26th. So we're not that far out, and from then till now, I've made great progress. Thank you to all of you who have been praying so hard for me. I, I, I give all the glory to God. I, this is not 
anything that I've done, it's definitely an answer to prayer. And both surgeons, as I've seen them, have been very, very impressed with the progress that I've made. In fact, I even grew new bone around the back of my shoulder, and my, my surgeon couldn't believe it. He could not believe it. My orthosurgeon, he was just shocked when he saw that x-ray last week. So things are good. Things are getting better, and uh, soon I will be back to hopefully a, a normal life at least being able to use both my arms, that would be great. So, all right, I am going to continue on with this, my friends, and then I will come back and show you the finished product. I don't want to keep you hanging on this whole time, but this is, this is the first one. And this is, these leaves, like I said, these are all, pretty healthy so I'm just gonna wash them up and um, and then I'll set this aside and I'll get the the rest of these done and then I'll show you what they look like when they're all cleaned up okay all right well I think I'm gonna just put my camera on pause for now and finish working on these other ones and and then I'll be back shortly Okay, I had a little change of heart here. Instead of waiting until I have them all done after bringing these in from my living room, I decided to uh, show you these. These are the ones that I had on that beautiful shelf, that antique tier, five-tier five shelf that my husband found and, and we finished and brought home for me. Um, those of you that have seen my previous videos you'll remember that hopefully and how I had these going from the smallest shelf on the top down to the biggest shelf on the bottom and these plants were doing fantastic over there um, until recently when everything else fell apart so the reason I wanted to put this on uh, video for you is I wanted to make um, a couple of points here about this that came to mind when I was looking at it these plants too were overwatered, and the problem is when you and I think I talked about this a little bit the other day so I hope I'm, I don't want to confuse you guys but please please if you have any questions or you are confused just feel free to contact me in the uh, comment section or you can private message me in Instagram as well um, with this type of plant, with, with this plant, I've noticed over the years that when the plant needs water, when it's really stressed and doesn't have enough water, it, this is what it will do. It will curl up trying to preserve what water is in there and trying to protect it from, if it's outside, it's, it's trying to protect it from the sun and getting dried out because it's not wet enough. Um, and the reverse of that is when a plant is overwatered when this particular plant is overwatered oftentimes you'll see the leaves kind of curled down on the on the sides and it's saying no more don't give me no more don't want any more water so it kind of talks to it it almost can you know let you know what it wants now <clears throat> generally I try not to let it get to either extreme uh, but because of my circumstance it 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 did it got it got out of hand. So as you can see I've got quite a few dead stalks, dead leaves here. I'm not too concerned about, I'm not really concerned at all about these two pots because there's so much growth on them that uh, it really, it, it, it doesn't matter. There, it, it's going to come back. Um, it, the only thing is that I get really sad when I do this to a plant. It's a living thing it's in my care and it can't fend for itself like it can outside you know uh, when plants are outside especially these types of plants they can crawl and they can try and seek out water but when they're in your house they're dependent completely on you for all of their all of their needs so <coughs> it's makes me a little sad that that I didn't uh, 
you catch this soon enough. So now you're going to see a little one flying around here. The other day on my last video, I said we had fruit flies. That is not a fruit fly. That one is a fungus gnat. And I do have a couple of those flying around here too. And I'm quite sure it's because I have all this decay. They like the decay. And as I said before, plants will send off a pheromone when they're in stress. And it's a, it's an odor. It's a, it's a, a scent that in the wild, it, it's part of the... Uh, chain of life, my husband calls it. So you have a plant outside and it's dying and these these insects will come and it will eat that that decaying, those decaying plants. So it there's a purpose for them, but not in the house. Um, so I do use a systemic. I know a lot of people frown on that, but honestly, I've tried every every single method that there is as far as organically you know I've tried the oils I've tried the lemon I've tried the um, oh just everything everything but neem oil and I, I know a lot of people who have tried neem oil for fungus gnats and it didn't help or it didn't get rid of them and I want to get rid of them um, one of the other methods that I use is are the BTI granules and those can be found at pretty much any hardware store. And those are safe. Those you can actually put in a bird bath outside. Um, and they're designed to kill flying insects, mosquitoes, and flies, and, and things. So, um, you know, if you, if you prefer to do that, then you can use that. The problem that I had with the BTI is it, it, um, it tends to come up to the surface. And they stay wet, and then they they you can get mold on them. Um, I then I tried putting it in the gallon jug with a little hot water, and then shaking it up, and then pouring that over my plants, and that worked okay. But it it did not it didn't do the trick. So I have a whole bottle of that. I will use it in between if I run out of systemic. I'm not going to get rid of it, and it's probably a good way to go if you have you know, pets that like to eat on your plants. I find with most plants, when they say they're poisonous, it's because they're chewing on it. There are, very, there are plants that can be poisonous just by touching them, but very few. Most of them I have found, in, at least in my experience, um, that it's, you know, if they ingest it or they chew on it. And so if you have that type of pet, well, then you probably need to keep a closer eye on it. Um, and, I, and I know that some of the plants that are the most poisonous are the ones that NASA backs for um, keeping the air clean. So it's pulling the toxins out of the air. Obviously, those toxins are now in the plant. So that's, that's how that goes. So anyway, um, this is what I'm going to be working on here. And when I get done with this, I am um, going to put them back on the shelf and I'll show you how they look at that point. So I'm going to cut all these dead things off. I'm going to take them out of the soil and then check out the roots and put them back in the soil. There's still, like I said, there's a lot of good, good healthy growth on here. And as you can see, there are new shoots coming up. So these I think are going to be okay. And on this one, I thought I was, this was lost forever. And I just, Put a little tiny bit of water in it the other day just for the heck of it to see what would happen and lo and behold check that out can you see that i can't point to it because i can't get my other arm up there but it's here let me put my finger next to it <coughs> it's right there it's a new shoot so i'm getting new growth i am so excited about that so we're going to leave this one as it is oh and I thought this was a dead leaf but it's not this is a new shoot too this the taller one there that's actually a new leaf coming up so yay not all is not lost and then I think I have this little one here this one I thought was gone too but now you see these are both new leaves 
I've gotten these leaves in the last, I don't know, two weeks. And as you can see, this one is drying up again. This is where my confusion is coming from, folks, because, yes, it's dry, but I have not underwatered this, so I'm not sure what is happening here. I don't know why that's happening. i got to get to the bottom of it. I don't know. Maybe I am underwatering and I'm just not realizing I'm underwatering because I am an underwater underwater by nature and I'm feeling the soil and it is quite dry so that is a possibility I guess but let's let's um, get these cleaned up and <coughs> back on the shelf and hope and pray for the best and once they start growing profusely again I'm going to start taking some cuttings and and putting them around the house so that if this happens again just so I don't end up losing all the plants so I, that I have extras. So that's the plan. Um, I hope you'll stand by and um, with, the, with the wonders of camera you won't have to stand by long because I'm going to pause you and when I put you back on no time will have passed. So I'll see you shortly. Alrighty and I am back. So here is the finished product. They are back on the, that beautiful shelf. They haven't perked up too much, but I, th I think they're going to be okay. These bottom two are, are pretty healthy yet, so I'm, I'm reasonably sure that they're going to come back all the way. Um, this one is the one that just had that little bit of new growth in there, so that tells me that one's going to be okay and this one too it's got new shoots that coming up I'm just gonna have to keep a pretty close eye on these for a little while and uh, hopefully everything will be just fine so uh, the other two I have on a different table. Well, let me go over there and, and show you those. And there we are. Those are very, very sad looking compared to what they were once were. But I'm pretty sure I was able to save them. And we'll know in a couple days if we start seeing new shoots coming up. And then I know it's going to be okay. And I'm glad this didn't happen in the middle of winter. So I got them kind of nestled in with my begonias here. They're getting brighter light than they would in the space that I had them in. And they'll get some afternoon sun. So hopefully they're going to be just fine. So that's going to do it for this video. Um, I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, catching up to do on my cleaning, my organizing, my plants, my repotting, just if I dwell on it, it becomes overwhelming. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do what I said the other day. I'm going to take one plant at a time until they're uh, back to normal. My next thing that I have on my agenda that my granddaughter told me today she's going to come tomorrow and help me with this wall um, it needs everything needs to be pulled out away from here it all needs to be rearranged and it needs some heavy duty cleaning I don't know if you can see this probably not let me do a close up if I can I have a lot of fallout from my burrow's tail oh, this is you can see some of it, but that's nothing compared to what I have on the windowsill and on the floor. So, and that also was from overwatering. So, I think I saved it in time. I've been checking it every day with the, my moisture meter, which I, most of you know that I don't use that on a regular basis, but it comes in really handy. 
um, when things like this happen because that is a very heavy plant and it's sometimes hard to know if the weight is from the water or from the plant so I I'm going to start using the moisture meter on that on a regular basis so we don't have that problem anymore and <clears throat> once we get this organized and figured out what we're going to do here I'm going to do a new video and I'll bring that back bring that to you as well um, my Pilea peppermoides she's hanging on but she's kind of wonky looking when my husband helped me put her in that bigger pot and she's been kind of struggling to get her beautiful orb shape back but it's it's finally happening but my biggest issue with this plant is it doesn't get enough light and that's because of the trees outside so my first instinct is to go put this in the dining room where it will get more hours of direct sun however in another month and a half or so those leaves are going to be off the trees and then she's going to get plenty of bright light here so I'm probably just going to rearrange these a bit to try to get her closer to the window uh, she's about 10 12 inches away right now but she's too big to put on the windowsill so that's where my dilemma's coming in but between my granddaughter and my brain maybe tomorrow we can figure something out and I think that's her texting me now letting me know the outcome of her car troubles so I'm going to end this video and I'm going to try and do another one for you guys for tomorrow when we're done with all this mess but I'm not promising because I'm not sure how how much my body's going to cooperate so if, if it does then I'll be back to you tomorrow. If not, then as soon as possible thereafter. Okay, well, thank you all for joining me for my my negative videos. Hopefully, once we get these all back the way they need to be, we won't have any more of those. Um, but I hope you all have a good day and peaceful life. I hope you stay safe. I hope nobody's sick. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Bye-bye.